That was hilarious. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So this is our third day. It's a nice day out. It's not raining. And we're going to have a business synthesis day. Uh, before we move into the um, business synthesis part, I wanted to make some announcement and then um, um, a little bit of um, like where we are at in three-day course um, overview. So um, announcement, two announcements, or actually probably three. So um, today, um, later on today, um, I, we, I will ask you whether you're coming to the after party tonight or not. So um, that will be sometime around um, before lunch. Okay, so if you need to check with your friend or family, do so, and we, we need to know the number. And we're, we will just go downstairs. So um, it won't, it's not a big hassle, but you can just stop by for just uh, one drink or two. That's just fine, so, but I just need to know the number, okay? And um, for, for, yes, so since this is our last day, uh, we will have um, Professor Ikeda from SFC to come stop by at in the in the evening to talk about what SFC is planning to do in uh, project-based learning for SFC all right and so project le based learning for F F S S bleh, SFC is it will be will be um, they will be asking for um, applicants in, in a different process in a completely different process so they will again will ask for their applicants, okay? So it's not directly connected to this, but the, they strongly recommend to take this short course before applying their SFC course. So he will talk about this, and then if you're interested in that, please do so, but uh, we also need to know how many of you here uh, would like to um, go on to the project-based learning, which will start from this weekend um, and then, in other words, I, I, I would like to know who are uh, maybe too busy or your schedule does not work for our PBL and cannot come. So we need to, we need to confirm who are coming or who wants to come and then who cannot come, okay? We need to confirm that. So this is going to be um, short but sort of intensive um, bi-weekly uh, project-based learning. And we will probably, I will show you the slide later, but we will probably ask you to do about 10 hours of work outside of class, about 10 hours in two weeks, okay? 10 hours of group work in two weeks. So it's not too bad because you get, you're gonna have a weekend and we have a, I'll show you a very neat picture of what you're gonna get at the end of this year. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave that for later on. But we will have a room that you can come in and do your group work together. We, we're gonna have that. So. So we will probably ask you to do about 10 hours of group, 10 hours of group work between um, lectures and lectures. And then during the lecture, we will ask you to do the group work. So that, that's how we're gonna go. And then we're gonna run until the, uh, uh, what is it? 14th of February, and that will be your final day presentation for this program. And then you will, then we have a, in March, we're gonna have KO um, Innovators Forum would that will be another big forum that we're going to do with SFC. And all of you are welcome, of course. I mean, all of you, you, you got to come because, you know, uh, many of your friends will be presenting at that um, forum. And also there will be uh, another forum with uh, other K KO, uh, not only KO Edge, but all the Edge programs. So Todai, um, Kyodai, and uh, no, Osaka University, Waseda, Ritsumeikan, and Kyudai, and everybody else is coming. And everybody else will present so that's going to be another fun day to you to join so those are um, those are you can come those are forums that you can come no matter whether you are in PBL or not project-based learning or not okay so I will make an, a clear announcement I will um, s uh, put up the slides for you later on so I will announce uh, make announcement later okay are they all that I wanted I, I had to cover yes okay all right so so today is the third day, and uh, thanks for coming in a, in a three-day roll. Not, not, not actually in a roll, but in, you know, three days um, consecutively. And then this is the KL Edge person. Are you getting closer to this person? Yeah? Really? <laughs> We're going to do a test on this. <laughs> no. <laughs> but 
you know, at least get the feeling, right? At, at least get the feeling. So you want to find insight to get a new value proposition. It's not just like ideas and ideas and ideas, right? I want you to try to find insight and to create value proposition, the strong and an innovative and unique value proposition. And then today we will talk about a little bit about business, and then you will probably be familiar with, you know, starting your business or start thinking about your business, and so that you can aim for a solid start. And we will talk about the gross. So gross is not only a money-wise, but a societal impact and everything. But you will uh, get a sense of that. And then um, are, I think you are more familiar with ideation behaviors, right? how you ideate, and especially how you ideate with interdisciplinary team, right? I think you're more familiar with that. And also, structuralization. Yesterday, systems approach. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that now as well. Wh and then it's, it was an interdisciplinary approach as well. And then thinking different. We've been just continuously um, telling you this, so I think you are now fed up, but now getting used to this concept as well. So that I hope you're getting somewhere closer to this um, person image. And this is the coursework aim. So coursework was, you know, overall we're trying to not teach you, but we're trying to, you know, get you familiar with innovative thinking and not just the concept, but some techniques um, combined. So design thinking, mindset, and tools that that was covered. So system thinking and systems approach way of thinking and diagrams, now that's on their belt, right? So today, financial synthesis or business synthesis and financial analysis concept and basic techniques will be covered. And again, so this is a um, capability structure model. You are, you have done this, check, this, check, and you're gonna have a check on this too. And then, of course, all of you have some kind of domain knowledge. It's domain knowledge is not about your degree, it's about your experience, it's about your personal characteristics. So, and you are getting really close to new value creation capability person, all right? And before I let Hashiguchi-san um, take the, the microphone, here is um, the overview of what you will be doing today, the discussion. So this is the overview of the discussion we're gonna have today. So we're going to talk about business synthesis, but you know, since we say synthesis, uh, because the reason we say synthesis is that, in general, people are too much focused on analysis, right? You, w usually, you hear financial analysis or business analysis, but analysis always comes in pair with synthesis. Like, what do you analyze, right? There's a question of what do you analyze. You have to have a target to analyze. You have to have a a thing to analyze. So you design or you synthesize the business and then you analyze. So it always comes in pair, it rolls in pairs. And then you, need, you will do it in, in an iterative form, okay? Iterative style, iteration is a key. So today, uh, Hashiguchi-san and I are gonna cover a lot. So value proposition, he, we will talk about entrepreneurship um, because, you know, since he is a great entrepreneur and we, m many of us are entrepreneurs, so we will talk about that. And then value proposition from a business synthesis point of view, you have been doing this, okay? You have been doing, trying to create value proposition. So that's what you have been doing in day one and day two. You were trying to create, so this is a value proposed to the potential customers, so you were thinking, what? can I produce, and why do I produce, and who cares, and who appreciates. That's what you have been thinking, right? Ideation, and then like CVCAs and everything. We have been talking about this, and we have been teaching you techniques, but we now we're gonna talk the value proposition as an entry point for business synthesis, okay? So you're, you're around here. And then we talk about unit economics. So you define and verify unit economics of product and service. And like we talked yesterday, your CVCA is some somewhere very close in the entry point of unit economics, right? Because this is, again, talking about economics of product and service in a unit. So you, you're, you're, you, you draw a line, or you draw arrow with your product or service, and that, that's almost the unit economics, 
okay? So it's nothing scary. It's just building up on your CVCA, kind of. This is, I think, a uh, more easy way to understand. And then from there, now you can move into marketability, okay? And then also, this, this concept was kind of covered in CVCA. When you were drawing and looking at CVCA, you kind of can imagine how your market can form, right? How many people, how many stakeholders are there? Like how many of this person, like this post-it, no, like moms, like how many are there? And uh, what kind of mom, mom could appreciate our, uh, our um, service? So you have been looking at something like that, but now you're gonna, we're gonna explicitly talk about the marketability and then the profitability. So profitability is sitting not necessarily at the last end of the role, uh, at last end of the line. However, but you know this is where it should sit, right? If you don't know your unit economics, if you have no idea what your market market marketability is, then it's very difficult to discuss about profitability, right? But this is often the case. You are asked. You are. You will be asked. You know. You will be asked this when you are here, okay? When you are putting up the post-it note, your boss will ask you for this, okay? So that's the gap that you want to fill, okay? And you cannot say to your boss, no, I am here, so, you know, wait for me. No, because that's his interest, or his or her interest is here. So you need to understand that you have to, you know, move quick so that you can talk to him or her or convince him. So that's, that's how you should uh, interpret this diagram. And then also, even though I talk to you in a, an, in a sequential way, but as you can see, the arrows, it does not go in a um, sequential order. It, you can start from um, different po points because it depends on like, what kind of material you have, like what idea or where you are and who you are. So it depends on where you are and who you are, but it comes in iteration, iteration. So you cannot say, okay, I'm finished with my value proposition, I'm moving into unit economics, okay, I'm done, 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 go. No, that's not gonna happen. It comes in iteration. So, so you need to keep that in your mind. You need to keep that in your mind. It's not waterfall, it's, it, it's not like waterfall that goes just down and down and down. No, it's in the iteration um, form. And so this is an example in a timeline. So this is more conceptual, right? This is more conceptual, but this is in a timeline, sort of. Um, so this is actually uh, something we used, in, like me and Tomita-san and Kyoko-san, we used in a one project with a company, the real company that you know, it's a very popular company that in a kitchen. Okay, yes, yes, very popular company that serves stuff for your kitchen. And um, so we have been talking about value analysis very early in the stage of the project. And then we start building our value proposition and then we start discussing about unit economics because we know what we want to propose. But we never quit our value proposition since this is an analysis. That's what I wanted to say, okay? We never quit, we don't stop. We don't stop here and then move on to here. We just keep on doing because you know it kind of it comes in, it comes in like a, like a tangle or the or, or a twist, and then after we learn something about uh, our unit economics, something you know we, after we design a primitive design of unit economics and done some analysis, then here comes the marketability, marketability, and then again we don't stop. It, we just you know add on, adds on. Of course there will be a grad you know gradation that okay we're gonna have a because you know we cannot do more than we can do, so we, we need we we will have a little bit of thinner arrows, but we will continue doing this. And then after we've done some uh, marketability analysis, we start um, calculating or we start considering the profitability. So this is kind of you know a little bit more realistic uh, way to see this. Okay, so. I know there many of you are, uh, some of you are very familiar with uh, business um, terminology and business um, orders, but, and I know there are some of you are just students and have no experience in business, so that I wanted to give you some overall picture of what we're gonna talk today, what we're gonna talk today. And of course, this is not the answer, okay? 
if this is the answer, we're not going to be here. We, are, we will be in Wall Street making billion dollars, right? But, you know, we are not doing that because we are still fighting with something we found. And we, we're looking for our, our on, we are, I think, on a way to be successful. So, but we wanted to share with you that, you know, how we do this, how we do this, and then how um, you can apply this to your project. So, and it's not necessarily a business or a startup. It, it can be your small project. It can be your small, I don't know, like a project in NPO. Because, it, you know, like it's even though we talk about like money, but it's not only about money. Like, you know, you can consider the market without money. Like, think about it, like Wikipedia, like a, it has a big market, but no money involved. Well, they are asking for a donation now, but, you know, no money involved. But they, they are doing just fine. So, you know, this is not only about making money, but this is about how you penetrate, how you expand, how you implement and expand. That's what we're talking about basically today. Even though um, we, will we will use a lot of business terms, so it will, I think it will um, give you the sense that we are talking about money only, but it's not. Okay, it's not. So I want you to have this image of the overall picture. I will um, give you this slide since it's it's not there yet, but I will give you the slide of the, these two um, pictures later on. Okay, so this is what we're going to talk today, and I will give it to Hiroshi Hashigu. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. Ew, my own Nikono Stone. Good morning. Uh, it will take uh, two hours to set it up. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, do you remember me? Uh, yes, my name is Hashiguchi, and uh, I said uh, on the day one, don't care my terrible English, okay? Don't care my uh, bad English pronunciation and my bad looking, okay? <laughs> don't care about it. Uh, no, 英語正直ちょっときついわっていう人ってどれぐらいいるんですかそんな。カモン、サンキュー。ビオネス、ビオネス。これ全然関係ないですよ、セレクションとか。正直に。はい。ね、あの、I <笑> で、アメリカ人はその人のことバカにしてたんですけど、僕は大好きだと思うんですね、その人が。ものすごくいいこと言ってる。でも英語が下手くそ。だけどすごいストラグリングしてる様子がよくわかって、すごい勇気もらったん
ice hockey school. More than 95% of students are playing ice hockey. It's mandatory. So you, if you have played ice hockey in Japan, you should go there. You can be a superstar in there. <laughs> and it's ranked at the number two or six or nine. Not too bad, not too bad, but uh, very cold, <laughs> very, very cold. <laughs> and it's not so famous in Japan, especially in Japan. It's kind of famous in the US. Thank you. Okay. And uh, when I said, uh, I hey, I went to talk in Japan, many people said, oh, I know, I know, talk school, yes. Uh, that uh, very famous school in Sidobashi, right? No, <laughs> no, that's another tech. Tech, <laughs> Tokyo Accounting College or whatever. <laughs> so, not school in Sidobashi, but in New Hampshire, and terribly cold. Okay. <laughs> this is my. <laughs> that was my house, right? <laughs> and young me and <laughs> young daughter and my wife. No, no, sorry. Okay. <laughs> then uh, uh, coming back to Japan after working for Accenture, I started my own consulting business and supported uh, large companies' new business development and uh, supported the venture companies starting up. And also, I supported private equity funds, you know it, and venture capital funds as a uh, outside advisor for giving a value to their portfolio companies. And Narumi Corporation is a table company and one of the portfolio companies of uh, private equity funds. And in the Narumi Corporation, I was working for hands-on turnaround manager and uh, director for, s for current business operation, uh, kind of like CEO, and for developing new business. Right? It's uh, very crazy, you know, doing both, doing current business operation and doing the new business development in simultaneous area. And adding to that, I did uh, downsizing, restructuring so it's not good for your health so don't do that in simultaneously do it uh, sequentially okay and I together with uh, Tago-san Tago -san came to here on today too no okay sorry uh, we together with Tago-san another professor visiting professor of K SDM uh, we wrote uh, design management, and uh, we uh, developed a new product, Osoro, so-called Osoro. Uh, any of you have read the book? Okay, 20%, right? Uh, Osoro is like this, like this, okay, that's it. <laughs> Before Osoro, the, there are so many decorative and high-quality high tableware. Uh, some of CBCA showed tableware or kitchenware, so it's very okay. It's very interesting, right? Uh, and uh, there are so many uh, functional and low-quality products like this, you know, silicone wear and uh, this kind of wear, and it is. Uh, uh, product of Narumi was producing, you see. And Narumi was producing tableware and the other companies uh, was producing storage container or stockers like, uh, you know, JPLOG or Tupperware. But, you know, it's users should buy both, right? It's not combined into one. And we combined in into one product, into Osoro. And uh, Narumi was producing Chinaware, Tojiki, and uh, 
other companies was producing siliconware, but it could not be used in the same time, in the same oven range, because the heat resistance is very different. And uh, producing uh, size control accuracy is quite different. So it cannot be combined. It's very difficult. And we combined it into one, right? That is also. The concept was very simple, very simple. But implementation was so difficult, you know. So we had to uh, produce, develop the raw material, and we had to break through the production techniques. This is a uh, uh, video. Oh, thank you. For developing the uh, new raw materials and getting the breakthroughs and breakthrough, we took three years. So concept execution gap is so huge that uh, you know, first we explained our initial concept, every user got excited. Yes, we, we need it, every user said. But Every professional inside companies and outside companies said, it's impossible, totally impossible. Someone said, how many years do you have experience in this table company, right, industry? Oh my, how many have you been there? He said, right? So this is a chance for you guys. And chance for us, I don't know, right? Okay, and after that, This video makes me reminds a lot. Memories, lots of memories. Make you cry? Yeah, <laughs> almost shedding tears. Oh, oh. 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 Okay. And as a result, uh, we got a, a bunch of design work or from uh, many countries. And based on that experience and other experience uh, Tagosan did, uh, we wrote this book. And uh, actually, I wrote a couple of books, more books, uh, and translated those books. One is uh, Make Asia, another is Shippai Surinokal. That's very interesting book. Why Smart Executives Fail? That is originally written by uh, Professor Shinoni Finkelstein of the tax school. And the uh, conclusion is smart executives, executives fail because they are smart. Interesting, right? And uh, this was, uh, was listed on the top seller list on in 2004 or something. And this one is breakout strategy about uh, the secret of double digit growth companies, i.e. highly grossing companies. Uh, I forgot the secret. <laughs> uh, kidding. Uh, it's it's also very interesting, but uh, sales is not so good. And MBA Liu uh, Sume, we wrote it more than ten years ago. And uh, on in this book, I interviewed ten alumni from uh, uh, top ten business schools like uh, Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and so on. And uh, those 10 people were just young alumni at the time, but now they got famous. So very interesting. One of them was a Stanford alum, uh, Isayama-san, is uh, now the most famous Japanese venture capitalist in Silicon Valley. So quite interesting, but uh, you cannot buy it anyway. <laughs> uh, it's uh, out of print. And partnership management is about uh, building uh, partnership, relationship, 
in business, okay? And design management. And in the design management, based on the, our experiences, we introduced this uh, concept. There are three factors of design, logic, sense, and love, right? It's very, very, very important for designing everything, including designing business, right? The logic is uh, logical thinking and communication skills, and uh, it includes uh, accounting or finance stuff for convincing inside and outside the company's people, stakeholders. And sense is a strong empathy for customers. And uh, sense of storytelling to customers and in inside company stakeholders. And love, love for customers, love for what you are doing. It's of course very inter uh, important, right? But uh, those two, uh, three things should be addressed in equally in depth. And those three things should be well balanced, but in many cases, it's not, it's not, right? It is a uh, typical problem number one, less sense and strong logic and love. It's highly seeds driven product out stuff, but few empathy for customers. It cannot be delivered to the customers, right? And typical problem number two is less logic and strong sense and love. This is the, the good looking and high quality, but not sustainable because less logic, less logic. So less uh, profitability or no verification of profitability, right? And typical problem number three, it happens a lot, less love, right? Starting business only because it looks hot now, it trends or uh, it seems to be profitable, right? Only because it's, you know, the starting business and getting business growth is a kind of very tough and challenging process. So starting it only because it looks like, uh, you know, profitable is too weak, too weak. And the important message cannot be delivered to customers. And users can feel the less love, okay? And in our cases, we delivered, uh, we did the communication like this, uh, this is logic that we communicated these messages to uh, users like, uh, you know, you can save space by using Oslo by 67%, by good through the good stacking, or save water by 60%, save energy, I mean the CO2 reduction by 50%, or save time by 42%. That was logic stuff. And since we delivered this kind of communication to uh, customers, the inconvenient truth around that dinner table. We observed and uh, interviewed a lot of, lot of customers, uh, potential customers, lot of users, and we got a empathy with them and condense it, make a condensed messages to them. Hey, we know your pain and we would like to solve your pain, okay? And love. You saw the, the, the video of Simon Sinek, Golden Circle, okay, great. Product itself is what, right? What? And uh, before producing the also final product, we uh, discussed and we came up with the our team's common why through the 
bunch of workshops. The why was we want to make users happy by providing completely new products to customers. Okay. So uh, in the last week, last Monday maybe, that this article was up. Oh, sorry, this article was up on the web. <laughs> web. <coughs> uh, Nikkei Technology Online. Real uh, Kaihatsukai. Someone missed it. Okay. okay. Uh, I I did it last night. Okay. Last night, midnight. 2 a.m. and I realized that those two guys are completely different people. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I said that you should not focusing on too much on evidence or fact, logic stuff. Okay, logic stuff, the fact and the evidence is very important, very important. But in, in some cases, it's is too much. Uh, focused on, right? So you should be balanced, those three things, to read it, this article. All right, oh, I'm still on the way of my introduction. <laughs> okay, and now uh, I'm running the company, Euphoria. It is providing the management consulting and developing IT systems for sports management field and healthcare field. And actually yesterday, I we launched a brand new product. So I couldn't show up yesterday, sorry about it. And actually next Thursday, uh, we are gonna launch another product, brand new product. So this week is crazy, <laughs> but you know, it's so fun, it's so fun. Okay, and one of my, our company's major clients is Japan's rugby national team, right? Uh, not the most important client, but not, not in terms of money, but in terms of emotional. I, I'm a big fan of rugby, so it, it, we are providing the IT systems for uh, managing their conditions and strengthen their strengths and speed, agility, power. Do you know that we are going to have a World Cup, rugby World Cup in 2019? It's very important event in rugby, uh, not industry, but the national team is getting stronger and stronger, right? Watch out them. They will make it, I think. And uh, you know, the, this kind of job is so fun. It's not <laughs> just job, it's so fun. You know, going to Sugadaira camp and uh, uh, talking with them and providing uh, services to them and users are highly appreciating our service. So it's, you know, kind of dream job. I'm enjoying it. Okay, so that's my background. All right. Uh, do you have any question about my <laughs> background? No. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Today's topic. Today's contents are like this. Entrepreneurship, business model, value proposition, marketing growth, and unit economics, marketing account, managerial accounting, and finance. Are so many, right? And we have only seven hours to do it, okay? And I'm s very slow speaker in English, okay? <laughs> we can do it, we can do it, okay? Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, entrepreneurship. Uh, let me discuss about entrepreneurship from my perspective, right, from my perspective. The entrepreneurship definition is uh, 
there are a bunch of definitions, okay? I don't think the definition is needed, but it's, you know, the like a uh, definition of rock and roll, right? So there are many definitions from the perspective, person by person, okay? The hyper uncertainty, right? Hyper uncertainty. Entrepreneurs implement your business or your job, your everything and a hyper uncertain environment, okay? So if you'd be uh, an entrepreneur in a broader sense, uh, you should love uncertainty. And the super high volatility is a great chance for us, for entrepreneurs, because established companies, established players don't like it, don't like it, right? And decent plan doesn't have sometimes any barriers in many cases, no plan, but the execution is important because everything's changed so quickly, right? And we should, entrepreneurs should act against inertia or norm or tradition or some bias. And uh, because, you know, we are going to change some rules of the game, right? So don't follow what majority of people said to you. Someone said many uh, advices to you, get useful things, only useful things, but not follow, not follow, right? Because you will change rules. So you cannot do it by following majority of people. And sense of ownership and sense of urgency, that's a very important senses entrepreneurs have to have, right? Put your hands on your business, sense of ownership, right? No one will take responsibility instead of you. You do, right? It's the biggest difference between employee and entrepreneur. I, I mean the entrepreneur in the broader sense, right? And no one would give a direction to you. You do. You should decide by yourself. And take urgent action in any time, in any case, because quickness and speed, high speed, agility of person, as a person or as an organization is the most powerful weapon, right? Comparing big players. We would change the rule. In the case that urgent action, agility, quickness, speed is quite important. Jozai Senjo. Jozai Sen Senjo. Why I said to, to twice? ちょっと英語っぽい発音になっちゃうな。上在戦場です。Right? And get things down mentality, right? Entrepreneurs must have get things down mentality. No implementation, no worry, right? Last one mile is very, very important. Getting things down. And no one would get things down for you. Okay? So, but delegation is important because you cannot do everything only by yourself, but don't put your hands off, right? Don't put your hands up, right? So, see this video? You know this video? And your job is? Kick off the innovation agenda. Fire up the troops for innovation. Hence the I. I for ideation. I for incubation. I for invigoration. I for implementation. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Alright. <laughs> 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 so, don't forget implementation. 
aggregation. <laughs> I don't mean to say that implementation is more important than ideation. I don't say so, right? Okay. Ideation at the starting point is very, very important. But many people ignore or uh, are not interested in executing at the last minute, okay? Don't forget about it. Get things done. And another one is here, come here. <laughs> well, uh, we are going to this uh, activity later on, okay? <laughs> Prepare for it. Are you firing up, right? So uh, this, this video sh says, uh, you know, the uh, shared reasoning or shared why we are going to do the innovation is very important, right? Right, so... Uh, that is why we need why, okay? And uh, in based on future, the starting something is investing many your resources on uncertain future, okay? Your time on future. Invest your time, right? On uncertain future, your money, effort, network, memories with your wives, you know, time with your babies, or many things, <laughs> right? Even joining this intensive courses, course, you invested your time and effort instead of, I don't know, enjoyable barbecue or something, right? Anything is exchanged. And entrepreneurship, or starting business is highly that investment, right? So invest is an exchange of two things, right? Certain something at present, present certainty, and uncertain something in future that's in that exchange is the investment, right? We should, we should think about it. Okay. We had we had this great discussion last night. You know this this slide sim seems so simple, right? You know it's it's so true that you invest money, time, and everything, but you really do it. Do you understand? Because you put just everything into this. This is what we agreed. Like like since we we all have companies and uh, even our TAs, their CEOs, so. We are in the uncertainty, we are hoping for uncertainty, better future, and we're investing our time, money, and resource, and love, and it's a trade-off. It's a big trade-off between you with your family, and you invest your time and effort. So it's, even though it's, it looks so simple, but it, we're kind of asking, can you do it, right? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, that, is, yeah, that is what I want to say. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. We have both, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and uh, life of an entrepreneur is uh, kind of risky and uncertain and chaotic and unstructured, troublesome, many troubles and restless, insecure, Instead of, sorry? Yeah. Please, please, please. More of the, uh, in the last slide. Okay. okay. Okay, okay. Uh, for example, in finance, in 
finance, the investment is putting your money on the project, right, for getting cash flow, for getting cash flow in future. Cash flow is certain now in future because it's in future. So it might be created in future, but it might not be created in future. But cash on your hand is certain, yes, because you have it, right? So investment in finance, investing, put your money on future uncertain cash flow, right? This is an exchange of two things, right? This is in finance. And for bro more broader sense, it's the same, right? If you would uh, start business, you should certain a stable option you have in your hand, right? Working for a current company or uh, you know, taking the uh, current uh, track. Right, but instead you will get uncertain future something, right? For getting that uncertain future attractive one, you should put your uh, uh, resources and you should put your effort on it, right? Does it make sense? Or can you? Yeah, other, other way to, yeah, he just ex said exactly the same, but other way to put it is you pay what you have now for what you get in the future, right? You pay what you have now. It's so certain. You have it. You have the money. You have the money now for the future you want to get. In the, the, and in the, that's uncertain because you don't know what you are doing next Monday. But you know how much money you have in your wallet right now. Right, but you are hoping to get more, or hoping to get—that's in terms of money. You're hoping to get a better future than now, and you invest the time and money and effort you have now. So you pay for future with a certain money you have, and you gain the uncertain future. So that's what he is meant to say. Okay. Thank you. Well, so life of an entrepreneur is like this, but totally exciting and fun, right? Totally exciting and fun. And if you could enjoy it, uh, welcome aboard, right? That is why you came to here, right? Okay. So. Uh, after this time, we are going to go through the more detail in business model, value proposition, and f accounting, finance stuff. Well, let us take a short break now. Uh, come back here at uh, 10 o'clock, okay? Just a short break, All right? Okay. Come up here at 10 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm.